Mr. Chair, fellow delegates, it has been my great privilege of serving the South England Conference in this role of the Church Growth Department. I would like to start with thanksgiving because this usually goes at the end and uh, in my excitement I may forget to thank uh, God above all for what he has accomplished throughout these four years. Without the help of God, nothing would have been done in this department. Uh, yes, I, I see here uh, Mavis, who is uh, my secretary. What do you say? Yes. Amen. Yes, without the help of Mavis, such a committed and dedicated and hard worker, we could not have accomplished what we have accomplished in, the, in this department. I would like to thank also, is Pastor Eglin here? Pastor Eglin Brooks uh, from the BUC. would like to thank him and also at the TD, uh, my fellow colleagues for the support they have given to, to us. I would like to thank my team, the church growth team, pastors as well as lay people who are planting new churches in the South England Conference. I would like to thank the coaches, pastor coaches and supervisors who are coaching and supervising lay people who are leading these new church plants and groups. I would like to thank the pastors who have been trained in the natural church development and they are engaging their churches in the process of becoming healthier and more revitalized churches. I would like to thank all the administration of the South England Conference, BUC and TD for all their support. Especially the South England Conference, I would like to thank them for taking the recommendation of the department to employ pastors just to plant churches. If we want this church to become a church planting movement, we cannot do that if we are not specific and if we are not intentional in this blessed work. I would like to thank all of you for your support and your prayers through the years. I would like to thank you on behalf also of my dear wife, Sophia. Sophia is here with us, and in the last few months, she is feeling a little better. Thank God. And I would like to thank you on her behalf for all your prayers and support. Wherever you see me, uh, you know, you ask, how is Sophia your wife? It has been a long journey of pain and discomfort, but God is good. He has sustained her. And I would like to thank my darling Sophia, for she has been a tower of strength to me, not only in this department, but throughout our lives. And I would like to thank you, uh, Sophia, for all you are and you mean to me and to this department and to the South England Conference. Now, I would like to uh, say this here. Following our God-given vision, we have worked so that the South England Conference would foster and cultivate a church planting movement and develop healthier and growing churches. Upon all who believe, God has placed a burden of raising up new churches. This is not what I say, but this is what the spirit of prophecy says. In medical uh, work 315, you will find this statement. 
unless this becomes a reality, and unless we as a church go back to our roots as Christians in the Acts of the Apostles and in the early development of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and we, pastors and lay members, have a burden, a God-blessed burden, to raise up new churches and extend the kingdom of God and not just sit back in our churches having a good time among ourselves. This will not become a, a church planting movement. We are seeing some signs of this, but we are not satisfied. We want to see much, much more. We, have at the, we had 57 church plants and groups in the South England Conference at the time of writing. And uh, of those 21 church plants and eight groups started during this term to God be the praise. We are targeting secular people, and at the time we have uh, 22 church plants that in some degree they are targeting and reaching also secular people. 12 healthy models have developed with many good contacts and baptisms of secular people. So we are seeing the ball starting rolling, although it's not in the pace we would like it to be, we give God the glory for what he has done. The latest of the baptisms, these were down at Chapel Porth, and this young lady from the community came to give her life to Jesus Christ, who has transformed her in the last two years. Praise God. Coming out of the sea, she said, she said, this is the first time in my life that I experience fami what family life is all about, talking about the church plan that she is attending. And we want to see more of these uh, baptisms for the praise of God. The department has set up some guidelines and some requirements to register and also to, uh, to establish new churches, to recognize and uh, organize new churches. And these have been very beneficial because at some point I was, I was uh, listening to, oh, did you hear of this group that has started there? Did you hear of the other group that has started over there? So we need it not to control, but to protect the church of God. Because not anyone can just go out of their church and start a group and teach whatever they want. We belong to the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and we have 28 fundamentals, and we have some principles to keep. So these guidelines have helped. Also, they have helped because when a church now comes and asks for us to be organized, we are now with the vote of the executive committee. We ask that new church to take a survey, and if that church is not healthy, then we ask that they go and work on their weak points until they reflect some basic biblical principles that are there in the Word of God. We have, uh, we have lay led church plants, and we can never become a church planting movement without lay led church plants. We we continue to pray and encourage and train more lay people for this blessed work. We started the term with eight lay-led church plants, and we had, at the time of writing, 20, praise God. In the mission possible... Interrupt for a second, uh, Pastor Aris. You have one minute. Yes, thank you. Uh, I told you, that's why I said thanks to God and thanks to all of them and their, you know, before. Uh, yes, only from this training event, only from this training event back in 2013, four new church plants started and they are doing quite well in connecting and reaching the local communities. 
Now, as far as training is concerned in the future, because now we have more than one chest plant in all the areas of the South England Conference, we believe that in, instead of joining the School of Evangelism, which we have joined and, and participated in the last two years, the church, the church growth department should have their own school of church planting and discipleship, and in every area this should take place Just so that you know, we can time grow. Is now up. Okay. We are operating in grace time. Yes. But grace time will not last long. Okay, we, we did uh, we have 30 seconds, Pastor. We, 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 have, that, we have trained uh, pastors for, to be coaches. And uh, this has been very appreciated. We have started simple churches, which are house churches. And this is the first, uh, the, 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 the first field in the trans-European division that we have linked with the simple church at the Adventist mission in the General Conference. And if you want to know more about that, get in touch with the church growth department, who, whoever comes and, and succeeds me. Uh, only, of, uh, only out of one of these house churches, we had five baptisms of secular people. Pastor Live. Harris, I'm going to have to ask you to stop there, please. Okay. Time is up now. Um, if you just have a closing remark, I'll allow you to do that, but it will need to take 10 seconds. Okay, my, my sincere prayer is that we will take the commission of God to us more seriously. We need a shift in the discipleship. We need to call it disciple shift because we have more disciples but very few disciple makers. And we need to pay attention to what our Lord is asking us Thank to do. Thank you very much, Pastor.